Good morning. One shot to your heart without breaking your skin. Good morning, good morning, guys. A um, little bit of an un unusual topic for me, but I am going to tell you guys how I got this topic idea. Um, I'm going to give everybody a chance to hop in for a second, and then we're going to get started. This is my headshot. Hey, Candy. My headshot. Um, this is my little screensaver. Good morning. This, these are all the ways that you can actually get in contact with me outside of Periscope. I'll go check out your profile, Candy. Thanks for hopping in. So, I don't like to linger um, that much. I actually, let me turn this down a little bit. Okay, so I'm Rashida Clark. I cut my hair since the, um, since my last headshot, obviously, and have been playing with a little bit of color, but nonetheless, I'm still me. And I am a realtor in Hampton Roads, Virginia. Um, I service the whole Hampton Roads area, which is seven cities, really more than seven cities, um, because that doesn't include York County, Williamsburg, um, Smithfield, things like that, places like that. Um, thank you guys for hopping in. Go ahead and share the scope if you have anybody. Yep, my, my main office is in Newport News. Um, but I travel the whole seven cities. Hey, good morning, guys. I'm Rashida Clark. Um, hopefully my voice isn't still too raspy. I am still trying to get over this really terrible sinus infection. Yep, Candy, I'll go check out your profile. I don't like to just automatically tell people I'll follow them. Um... It's not to be mean or anything. I just like to check out people's profiles before I go, yeah, I'm going to go follow you, just to be completely honest. Um, so anytime you guys ask me to follow you, I do go check out your profile, and I do follow a lot of people. Um, but if something crazy happens, I will unfollow you, just saying, just being completely honest. So I actually was listening to a video from a credit repair specialist who was talking about... Um, she was talking about a couple things, actually. She was talking about going to purchase. She started off talking about going to purchase a car. Hey, welcome. Um, good morning. She was talking about going to purchase a car and with bad credit and, you know, why you shouldn't do that, you know, how you can basically fix your credit. And then she kind of went into a vent about um, People with bad credit, a lot of times, just not having the financial literacy and making bad credit decisions and how we can stop that and, and basically help people understand financial literacy overall and, um, you know, just how to be smarter with their money. So part of that discussion is how I got this topic because she talked about how she was from Oakland, California, and the neighborhood that she grew up in. Um, and that her parents moved away from when she was a small child. When she goes back to that neighborhood, she doesn't see anybody. She doesn't see any minorities living in that neighborhood now. And basically what it sounded like is she was talking about a little bit of um, gentrification, which if nobody knows what that is, basically it's when all of the minorities or the black people move out of, out of a neighborhood and all the white people move back into a neighborhood just to keep it on simple terms. Um, I don't want to get real deep into race relations. I'm not trying to start a race conversation, but in some ways there is going to be some racial undertones because a lot of times um, it's minorities and um, middle class or or lower middle class um, whites that don't have a lot of financial literacy, right? I mean, that just makes sense because most of the financial, financial literacy is with um, upper class or rich uh, white people and 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 possibly other minorities. So, what I want to talk about is I just I just put this out here, and the topic is should I move to the hood? Okay, I wanted to give it that topic because I felt like it would bring people in and hey, welcome to the scope. It would bring people in and start a conversation. So it's not intended to start a bad conversation. Let me just say that, but it's intended to spark some conversation and 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 dialogue um with folks you're renting really okay we'll talk about that in a second 
So should I move into the hood? Here's what I want to do. You bought to rent it out. Oh, okay. That, okay. I was getting ready to say, cause I didn't think you were renting. Thanks for the hearts guys. So as we go through the scope, please share it. If you like the scope, please double tap the screen. That's how you get the hearts. Um, and of course, ask questions. I, I'll try to, I always stop and answer the questions because if I don't, I'm going to forget them. But if I forget them, just put them back into the scope and I'll answer them. So normally I tell people as an agent, right? Always buy the ugliest house in the best neighborhood if you can. It's better to buy the ugliest house in the best neighborhood than it is for you to buy the best house in a bad neighborhood. I don't like to say bad because... Bad is a relative term, okay? It is relative. But what I thought about as this, this young lady was talking on the scope about her old neighborhood and gentrification and all that kind of stuff, I went back to my days as working in the planning department. That's what I did before I became a, a realtor. I don't like the piece of paper. Um, I worked in the planning and zoning department and I was a community organizer, okay? Um, I did a lot with um, neighborhood organizations, homegrown neighborhood organizations, not necessarily like homeowners associations, neighborhood volunteers, a lot with housing, a lot with housing. And so what I learned when I was doing that work is that there are neighborhoods in every city that are bad or or have gone through a period of a rough period of time, which by the way, you guys, there's a natural neighborhood and I actually should have pulled that up. There's a natural neighborhood process. Every neighborhood has a, um, a, a, a sort of a time period when they, when they go up because they're being built, everything is good. Then there's like a plateau and then there's a decline. And then there's a, another, um, sort of increase that that's a natural, um, process for every neighborhood. That's a natural process for every neighborhood. Well, I'm going to talk about that in a hot second, but so that, so like I said, every neighborhood can go through that process, but here's what I want to talk about. So again, back to what the young lady's topic was, she was saying that in the old neighborhood that she lived in, which used to be the hood. Okay. Back in 20, 30 years ago. Now, um, it has been redeveloped and I know people hear this term a lot, no more hard living people, um, people hear that term a lot. The neighborhood has been redeveloped. Okay. Um, and, and different cities use different words to describe it, but there's always a process there. And so in my city, and I'm just going to use Hampton and Newport News as an example, and actually every city, the zoning department and the planning department and the housing authority in every city always has what they call a master plan. They love, everyone loves a barbecue. They do. They always have what they call a master plan or a neighborhood plan. And in those plans, the cities identify neighborhoods. Um, <laughs> they identify neighborhoods that they feel need to be redeveloped or re-energized, okay? And so a lot of times those neighborhoods are neighborhoods that people, the citizens consider the hood. They consider them the hood. And if anybody, I don't know, if anybody's in Newport News or Hampton, Virginia, if you could just like uh, put, a, put a yes into the comments because I'm gonna use some of our local areas as some examples, but we have a couple. Um, one of them being what used to be called East End Newport News or Downtown Newport News. For years, they call that, oh, thank you. They call that the hood, right? Everybody called the hood. Why? That's the ghetto. That, that's the term. And I'm just, I don't like these terminologies, you guys. I'm just using those so you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, and for years, I've been telling people, if you got some money, you need to go ahead and buy some property down there because the city is planning to redevelop that area. And that's exactly what they started to do. They have started to redevelop the hood. And so people that owned property and held that property in that area and in in those locations are, <laughs> hey, welcome to the scope guys. People that own property in those locations are now going to start seeing really, really good growth, equity, 
on their investment, the investment that they made years ago. The investment that they made years ago. So when I'm talking about the hood, I don't really mean just moving to a bad neighborhood. What I'm suggesting, you guys, for people that are really looking for a good deal, yeah, well, anything down, like there's pockets of, of downtown Newport News that are, that were still considered pretty good. And then there's pockets that are still considered bad, but anything in the, in, in the number streets down there. And I'm just using my, my city as an example, you guys, but you guys would probably think of any uh, certain neighborhoods in your cities, wherever you are. But the city has started to redevelop that area. They have been planning to do that for 15, 20 years. So these master plans, they're, for, they're available for public to view. You can go down to the city. Most of the time you can find them on the city's website so that you know. So if you're looking for a good investment, it may be a good idea for you to buy in the hood. Now, this is a long-term investment. I'm not talking about something that's going to be two, three, four years, depending on when you are actually purchasing. It's not going to be two, three, four years down the road. But for people that are looking for a long-term investment, that is how you can get grow some equity. That's why they started moving everyone uptown, because they tore down the public housing because they're getting ready to start redeveloping everything. But here's one of the, the, the things that I notice as far as race relations goes. A lot of times white people are more willing to move into those areas than black people are for whatever reason. Waterfront property down there is prime real estate. If you think about how cheap it was in the hood, how cheap it was years ago for people that actually had the foresight and they bought down there and they still have that property, they're about to get some money, right? They're about to get some money, but black people usually are more afraid to invest in those neighborhoods. White people are, more, are usually more willing to take the risk. So the, for whatever reason, I mean, I think I know a few of them, but for whatever reason, they're more willing to take the risk. So you guys, I really want you to think about that. If you're looking for long-term investment, you're looking for real wealth building, you're looking for growth, go down to your, these are my tips. And I know this again, because this is my former life. I worked in planning and zoning. I worked in community organizing. Go and look at the city's plans and see where they're planning to do redevelopment. Redevelopment usually encompasses the whole neighborhood. That usually means that they're going to start tearing down and rebuilding putting some type of investment, new roads, new infrastructure, maybe even new schools, uh, public art, all of those kind of things are things that we saw happen, I saw happen firsthand in several city, uh, several neighborhoods, including particularly downtown Newport News, which is where the biggest, in my opinion, the biggest redevelopment is happening right now. So if you have some of those areas in your city, welcome to the scope, you guys. If you have some of those areas in, their, in, your, in your city, that is opportunity for really great investment. But again, it's going to be a long-term investment. So let me give you an example. I don't have numbers for, for downtown Newport News because that is still very much in progress. But this young lady was talking about, the same young lady that I mentioned before, she was talking about how in Oakland, the houses that used to be twenty thirty thousand dollars worth twenty thirty thousand dollars are now worth nine hundred thousand dollars. Okay, now granted, granted, it is twenty years later, but when we're talking about building wealth, you can't build wealth overnight anyway. Even if you're investing in your four hundred one k or your IRA, you can't. You're not building wealth over, overnight anyway. It just doesn't happen like that. So these people, we're talking about buying and holding property. And if you think of buying, buying a house, $20,000, of that's what it was in that city, and holding it 15, 20 years later, and now it's worth $900,000, that is, I mean, that's why real estate is still one of the easiest ways for people to build wealth because of that mindset, but you've got to be thinking long-term. So when I heard, when I saw her talking about that, I was like, you know what? I need to talk about that. Cause I've actually done a, um, I'm sorry, I can't read that, but I'll go back and try to translate it. I actually did a drive through on Periscope of downtown Newport news. Yeah. I'm just using, so yeah, you're right. I'm just using the hood because that's what people call it. I don't like Especially when I worked in neighborhood relations, I didn't, I never, I never said ghetto. 
the hood never never said any of that kind of stuff because it is it's a relative term it can spark um you know it pulls at the heartstrings it's just not a good term to use but it's a term that everybody knows you know what i'm saying when you say oh the ghetto oh you live in the hood people are like oh yeah i know what that is everybody can identify where that is with the city um i can't but i can go back actually i may be able to find it but I want you guys to look for the master plans or the neighborhood plans in your city with your local um, planning department or your housing department. The other, other thing you can normally find out is where are the cities, where are the cities investing money as far as, um, as far as like, grant money so some of our cities actually started to offer grants in certain neighborhoods for people to redevelop and improve the curb appeal of their homes that's another form of reinvestment so the city is trying to encourage people to it was a matching grant so they're trying to encourage people to reinvest in their property to bring the property values up but it was free money so in other words if you if you put in five thousand we'll give you five thousand that's a ten thousand dollar investment Free money, never have to be paid back. No strings attached other than you have to match it. So those are good things. Okay, let me see. Her name is, I'll share the video on my Facebook page because the video came through a private group. Um, it came through a private group that I'm in called Dream Catchers. I love that group. And I'll share this on my Facebook page and I'll let you guys see the Facebook page. Because, I mean, it's kind of a rant, but... A lot of things that she talked about in there were pretty true. I, I don't want to say everything. I liked everything that she said, but a lot of the things in there were true. And, and that's what sparked this particular conversation. But I definitely want to say, you guys, so when you're thinking about buying, first of all, you always need to be thinking long term. A lot of times property right now, you can't just buy it today. And in two years, you think you're going to have a ton of equity in it unless you put a lot of money down or you or you bought something like a foreclosure and you did a lot of updates to it. So you always need to be thinking long term, but especially if you're looking at wealth building, um, looking at a piece of property that you can buy and hold, even if that means you buy it, you only live there for a couple of years, you hold it to rent and then you move somewhere else. It's a really good idea to look at some of these areas of, I'm going to stop saying hood, areas of redevelopment in your cities. It's a great idea actually to look at redevelopment in your cities. So um, if you guys have questions for me, uh oh, I clicked out of it. I love to answer them. I hope that explained the topic. So it wasn't meant to offend anybody, but it was definitely meant to uh, bring you guys into the scope. Um, I actually love the idea of duplexes. I wish that my area had more duplexes because that is something that I would have done personally. I think FHA will allow you to buy up to four units. I think they'll allow you to buy up to four units. So if you're in an area that has like small little apartment complexes or something like that, I think it's a great idea or duplexes. I personally, FHA is not the best loan, be mainly because of the high um, mortgage insurance that they charge. Basically, any loan that you have that you're not putting down 20%. Is gonna pay is gonna require you to pay mortgage insurance. And I'm not, not talking about homeowners insurance. Homeowners insurance is different than mortgage insurance. Mortgage insurance insures the bank in case you don't pay your mortgage. Exactly. PMI. It insures the lender in case you decide to stop paying your mortgage. Homeowners insurance you're required to have, which covers the structure. So anytime you're putting less than 20% down, they're gonna require you to pay a home uh, mortgage insurance. But it, from what I understand, you're going to have to ask your lender, the mortgage insurance on the FHA loan is much higher than it is on some other ones. So for that reason, I'm, I don't really like FHA loans. On the other hand, on the other hand, FHA loans are still the best opportunity for people, especially younger people who are trying to start building wealth. Uh, and want to go ahead and become homeowners who don't have that large lump sum of money to put down, it is the best way for you to get into a property. And so what I suggest is get in how you fit in. If you can get an FHA loan, get it, pay it down as much as you can, 
and re and refinance that sucker as soon as you can and get rid of that insur that mortgage insurance. That's what I suggest. Um, a better loan pro I mean, it's hard. It will depend on your credit. It, it's gonna. There's a lot of factors. It'll depend on your credit score. Um, depends on if you're VA eligible. And a lot of people don't even. They used to serve. Or they were in the reserves or they're still in the reserve. A lot of people don't even realize they have VA eligibility. If you're VA eligible, VA is the best loan to get because it doesn't have any mortgage insurance and you don't have to put any money down. However, you got to make sure you're paying extra on that VA loan because you're going to start in that VA loan upside down. You're going to start upside down. Um, VA is the best. If you don't have a lot of money to put down, FHA is the second best. And some states are now starting what they call conventional loan programs um, that don't require mortgage insurance, but you have to have a good credit score. You've got to have a good credit score. In Virginia, we have one through our housing department. It only requires 3% down, which is, which is nothing for a conventional loan. Conventional loan used to always be 20% down. Now it only requires 3% down. Um, but you've got to have a good credit score. So you can't go into that program with a 580 like you can at FHA. That's the advantage of the FHA. It'll let you have a lower score. It lets you have a higher debt to income ratio and less money to put down. So so if, you just, if you're just trying to, to start somewhere and you want to go ahead and get into a home, FHA is not a bad program. Um, the terms aren't that ideal, but you can, you know, you can always refinance later. Pay it down, refinance later. So I don't like to, it's not my favorite, but I don't want to steer people away from that. It depends. It depends. So I always say you need to, you've got to combat one or the other. If you have a low score, you need more money to put down. If you have more money to put down, you can have a lower score. So it depends on what you're trying to do. FHA, FHA's guidelines is 580. Bottom line, 580. But most of the banks won't let you have a 580 unless you have a lot of what they call compensating factors. So you've got money in the bank, you've got a really hefty um, savings account or IRA or something like that. But FHA is the bottom line, uh, 580 for FHA is the bottom line. Ideally, you would have more like a 620 or a 640, which still isn't that high. It's still not that high. If you're paying your bills on time and you don't have a ton of credit card debt, a, six, a 640 isn't that hard to get. Most of the time for people is paying their bills on time and reducing the amount of credit card debt that they have. Now, that's general advice, okay, guys? That's really general. It's all going to depend on what's on your credit report. Really, really, really going to depend on what's on your credit report because other things could be holding your score down. I'm just saying for those, those are the two main things that hold people's score down, late payments, too much credit card debt. Uh-oh. Any other questions, you guys? I've got to try to figure out how, why this won't share. Nope, I don't want to share that. I'm going to share this on my Facebook page. I will show you guys um, the Facebook page. I had somebody tell me the other day that they couldn't, the page wouldn't let them, wouldn't let them find it. But if you guys have issues, please let me know. Email me here, Facebook, Rashida Clark. Realtor is how you find me. And I actually will show you the page itself just in case something else goes crazy. Um, because I'm going to share this just so you guys can see it. Again, I don't agree with everything that she said, but I do feel like she made a couple of really good points. So that's really what sparked this topic. Here's the actual Facebook page. Um, I'm actually getting working on this page right now because I think it's ugly, but nonetheless, here I am, right there. Thank you guys for joining. Um, my voice is Casper again. I am feeling much better for anybody that watched me a couple days ago. Um, and last week, I had this, I've had i had the same sinus infection for like almost two weeks now. I'm feeling a lot better. So thank you guys. And um, I hope that you guys found some good nuggets of information in this scope. And I will see you guys later.